there for a second there. Oh, wait, wait. I thought I had the gym to myself, <laughs> but like, Who's this guy? Who is he? Where are we? You like that? Yeah. I don't know, this one. That's a big, give me that. Doing a vlog. What are you doing? Joey? Well, I was gonna say the intention of Drew's video is to be annoying, and here he is grabbing my camera and <laughs> it's so well, I'm gonna work out in between being annoying. So go do your gym tour video, okay. dude. All right, what is going on, guys? Coach Show here at Elite FTS, which I have to say is probably my favorite gym in the world. It's a mixture of probably Juji's in this gym would be my perfect gym, but I kind of side more with Dave's gym. So this is amazing. And uh, Dave, I just want you to take me through this and kind of. Like, how did this even become a thing? Like, when did this start? Where did it start? And how did we get to where we're at today? It's like, give me the yes. rundown of, of how did you kind of come up with where you wanted things? You've been around for a long time. Uh, like, is there any method to the madness here? Or is it just, we got to fill this space, we're going to put them wherever we can? There's really not. There's... Um, <laughs> just madness. Yeah. Just madness. <laughs> a lot of the pieces in here are the original pieces. So okay. I would, let's just say that, I don't want to say complete prototypes, but they're... The, the last piece before going out to market for my final yeah, inspection yeah, okay. of whatever it is. Cool. So that's why a lot of things are kind of hacked a little bit in here okay. because I'm too cheap to buy the original version, but I also like to be reminded of where the mistakes were, yep. you know, and some of the other things. So some things I need to upgrade for sure. There's some, there's some items in here that we no longer sell from different companies that I need to replace with the companies that we sell from. But, all that, so how it lays out, that's the bigger question, is I always, I always like the idea of rubber and concrete, mm -hmm. right? So the, the side over there with all the monoliths and the racks and all that, the rubber and the turf, yeah. like, that's like the meathead side. And then mm -hmm. the equipment side is kind of like meathead the side, rehab, equipment side. body <laughs> side, right? right? So yeah. it's interesting because what you'll find is, <laughs> this is, I got 20 years, this is a, two different gyms to kind of show this. The, the this competitive strongman, the power lifters, the strength athletes, mm -hmm. right? They're gonna always come in, they're gonna drop their bag either on the turf, the rubber, or by the benches, right? It's pretty accurate. The bodybuilders <laughs> always drop their bags always over right here, <laughs> right by the door. It's a weird ass, it's a weird That's ass true, thing. I, I, don't right, why, I don't know right why, I don't know why. My bag is right over there. It's the like turf. right by the bench. You know, I, don't, I don't know why, but it's like they gravitate more towards the, the yeah. rubber and the others gravitate that's more towards the concrete. So that's how that layout is. And it's, that was part the, the main reason was that, you know, so it's, it's easier to run through groups if we're, I would say for this, for, for the last three gyms, that's been the layout because it, you can only coach so many people in a squad at one time. Mm. It gets to be over 10 people, say, in one monolift or one rack. Yeah. And it's, the monoliths are way better than the racks because you don't, it, they adjust up, mm. down, in, out. So that group can go faster. So if you're doing a seminar and you're coaching, I want to coach at least 50 to 100 reps of everybody's lift. I can't do that if there's 25 people and it's a power rack. And some people are going from here and some people are here and they're yeah. just moving all over the place. So how many stations I could have to move people through it, 10 or 15 people per group with three coaches per station was that next level. Mm -hmm. So now how many benches, how many um, monoliths or racks, and yeah. then how many deadlift areas, mm -hmm. then let everything else kind of fit around there. I have a problem that I like equipment and stuff, so it will just overflow, overflow. Now we have walking spaces again, <laughs> kind of, sort of, kind of. Where at first it Don't was clear, very clear yeah. walking spaces. Okay. Yeah. Now when you have to like start cutting through equipment aisles yeah. instead of walking down yeah. aisles, to me I love that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. A damaged shin means you're in a good gym. I was gonna say, like <laughs> even at my own gym, like people think it's tight, and I'm like. This isn't tight. Like we can, there's always a way. Oh, there's always. There's always a way to fit more equipment. <laughs> yeah, that's my, one of my lines. Is just get it. We'll figure yeah, it we'll out. Figure there's it out. always yeah. a way. Yeah. We can always fit it somewhere. So that's kind of what that basic layout was. And just obvious other things, like you want the leg stuff together. And what are you going to superset if it's a challenge set? Okay. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is the bodybuilding side, right? Primarily? Or the yeah. machine side, equipment machine side? Machine side, rehab side. So we got like some leg stuff. We got a... Uh, is it a back machine? Here, let me cut in front of you. 
Yeah, you have a Juju Mufu? Yeah, Juju's in here. Juju Mufu? He's the, uh, the gym mascot. Okay, so we have, let's let's go through this because people want to see you. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, where we so Dave, just take us through like kind of the basic rundown of, we'll do like sections, like what's going yeah. on in this section of the gym over here. Okay, well, you want to hit this first? Oh, yeah, 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 this thing. Okay. The most attachments I've ever seen. In the in the okay. <laughs> Juju has one, so he knows all about it. Well, you have to yes. It's the greatest yeah. cable attachment that exists. This is really a, yeah. A, yeah. a product plug video hey, for Elite. Yes. <laughs> As we work our way down through the aisles, right? The, <laughs> yeah. the, the functional trainer and the racks and the, all this stuff is there, right? The tall stuff. Yeah. We have these in here so we can show the coaches that we can build things for their okay. basketball players, their NBA oh, players. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes right? sense. Because a pull down machine that's not super tall yep. is not going to be effective. You need so someone the, to you know to accommodate those plus eight inch in, ape index. Oh, right? for yes. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and we need so there's with that comes storage for cable mm -hmm. pieces, and I got every cable piece probably ever known to man. So there's on the functional trainer, there's cable storage on the power rack on the back of the lap machine. I stick cable st or you know, attachment storage mm -hmm. everywhere. This here was a this what this originally was designed as was one of the barbell holders. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fixed yeah. barbells. And that's what I had at our old gym, and I I never had the fixed barbell, mm -hmm. so I just would throw cable attachments on it. With this one here, it's like, okay, how can I make it better yeah, yeah. and hold more shit? Because there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and there's, it's kind of, it's great to have a lot of stuff, but it's, and I don't want to complain about that, but it does suck if there's, I mean, I want to use that tri-grip. Uh-huh. No, I see what you're it's like one out of 500 attachments, and you don't know where it you're is. You're like digging, yeah, trying to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, so you're trying to figure it out. So that's the cable storage attachment as we move through. Yeah. A lot of the stuff just becomes, you know, the seated calf raise I always used when I was powerlifting yeah. because the, the seated position for the calf training, I think, helped knee health okay. for me more than anything else that hmm. I did. So that was always been a part of this. That. I mean, side note, but like powerlifters probably neglect calves more than. You would think like they're not training cats. The ones, yeah, that's just the ones that I do. If they do anything, it's going to be the seated cat. Okay, yeah. More so than anything else. Um, we have the stretch cage over here too. Yes, the stretch Does cage. Does anyone ever use it? I do. You the do. Most of the most, the most inflexible. For, I'm lazy. <laughs> Look, it's, it's useful. Dude, why, why lay on the floor and stretch my hands? Oh, your shoes so are there too. Can, just, just, just lift your leg up. I yeah, yeah, hook, yeah, man. And, but there's something about being able to hook my heel here. <laughs> right and then i pull down a little bit yeah it's straight it distracts and stretches yeah and i don't have to get on the floor like why is this not a good thing it's yeah it's, it's the greatest it's the thing perfect in the world. stretch for a strength sport athlete yeah right there. <laughs> that was something that was stuck in i went to i went on vacation in myrtle beach and there was a gold's gym there and this some this was stuck in a closet somewhere really? and i go in the closet i'm like this is the greatest thing ever because my arm I'm like, I can like ladder walk my arm up. Yeah, yeah. Like, got it. You know, <laughs> it's so much better. Um, That's great. Well, that looks good. All right, good. so we got that. Now, where are we at? So, all of it's just pressing stuff. Is, we got some cardio. There's cardio. We true, do sell a true form true runner. Form. Um, I don't have open and flower, <laughs> yay or nay for that, you know, so. Yeah. The athletes that we get out here, they're not much, and we're not usually doing speed training with them. Mm -hmm. It does re it does hold their form better. Okay. I will say that. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to care about that. We got this thing right here. This would be the first leg press oh, really? that I had. So the, okay. the issue here is that it's, it's, on, it's high. The degree is very high. Yeah. So it's a little bit higher than what most are, but I did it on purpose because I wanted it higher to make it harder. Okay. Because over a period of time, what these <laughs> companies started to do was to lower They're the lower. angles yeah. to make it so you could use more weight, uh. which is great, right, for your ego. It's great for Instagram. It's great for all the other stuff. But if you're actually, <laughs> for me, it sucked because now I got to go fetch 14, 20 plates per side just to be able to do mm -hmm. leg press. Mm -hmm. So my answer was, let's just make it as hard as we can. But I went to, with this one, I went too high. Okay. So it does curl the lower back a little bit too much at the bottom. So we made this so it adjusted a little bit more. Um, and that's why I always have reverse bands on this. It's gotcha. just to deload the bottom. The one we sell isn't at this. Uh, it's, okay. it's brought back down. 
but it did show me that having this adjustable is huge. Okay. Let's we'll see. You know, so yeah, I mean, it, yeah, goes, it goes cool. way, way up and way, way back. Where sometimes you might have just the three, three levels, mm -hmm. which doesn't really make a difference at all. Yeah. This you can yeah. go. All, it, it's it's a huge, vast difference okay. with that. And you yeah. do believe in calves? There's another one right behind you. That's right. The standing calf right. That's for shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> reverse hyper yeah, how many reverse hypers hyper. do you own well this is well there's only <laughs> there's only one reverse hyper right it's the one that louie owns the name too because it is trademarked uh, okay, and all okay. the other stuff so the patent of may expired but it's still trademarked so that is his that's his so that's that, that one's louis it's a reverse hyper all the other stuff i call them posterior chain developers yeah, yeah, yeah. right um so currently i only own these two do i, I don't do any of them but <laughs> I have other people I have other people do them a lot so it's I don't I'm not a non-believer in them I'm, I'm a person that did them between four and 16 times per week for 10 years and never want to do another one again the so rest you got of your my fix, life was what you're saying. Yeah, I'm done with reverse <laughs> hybrids I'm, I'm done what, what is this thing is this like a the power squat okay, power squat yeah. right. so you face towards the wall okay squat into it and then when it helped Wendler squat a lot. There's a okay. couple people that really, really thought it helped their squat. I think it's more because it almost forces a good morning, a heavier good morning, good morning position. Okay. And Do you still sell this or no? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Then we got a uh, hack squat. Hack squat, yeah. Oh, these are very familiar. I remember those from the video. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Splice and footage over. Yeah, the uh, still got some PTSD from the hack squat bands. That was pretty mm -hmm. gnarly. Yeah, that, that would definitely kill you. But one of our newer pieces is the chest of course. Right? Oh, check this out. Which? Yeah. Are Joey, why don't you hop on it? Oh, look at these like, moves. Oh, wow. They yeah. just in and out. So for that, for you, it's probably need to come out because it's going to pull your see angle. Your arms are coming in too much. You're going to feel that in your biceps a lot. Yeah. Whoa. This is nice. This is brand new? Yeah. Oh, I like these a lot so i wanted to break we I wanted to bring the loading back towards you because most of the time the loading's done out here which is fine but that if you want to do like meadows type crazy stuff and yeah. strip sets and upsets and the weights out here you just a quarter or a plate when the weights way out here is heavy uh -huh. so then what are you going to do put fives on for strip sets and yeah. it, it doesn't this makes it a little bit easier load wise it's still heavier okay. because of that with, with the added bonus that you can still do. Oh, there you, you go. Know, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. A for real meadows yeah. at the end of it. This thing's gorgeous. The build quality on this is awesome. Yes, but the, the trick on this one that took us so, so long is it still didn't, what I wanted to be able to do was to go from a seal road to a chest supported row, because that would be freaking awesome. Oh, okay. But yeah, there's yeah. way more that goes that, on like, to yeah. make that happen that we weren't. This one, my concern was I wanted to be able to have somebody that's maybe five two uh -huh. to eight foot still be able to use it. That mm -hmm. becomes the other issue here, mm -hmm. because the foot adjustment doesn't solve the plates potentially okay. hitting the ground. Hitting the ground, which is why they'll go out here sometimes. Yeah, because it keeps the plates for. I got gotcha. you. Very yeah, that cool. That was kind of a pain in my ass for years. Pit shark. We got the pit shark. Or the pit shark. The pit shark's good. Where. I mean, it's good if you want to absolutely destroy somebody, right? <laughs> isn't, isn't that your specialty? Yeah. Yes. I feel like, yes. yeah, you're really yes. good at that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. John killed me on that machine. But this one's easier. It, well, it could be because the handles make it easier to cheat yeah, pull yeah, yourself yeah. up. But this one's easier, too, when you're in a complete fatigue state to still be able to pull your air. Yep. A lot of the other ones, just the way that the belts pull, when you can't breathe, you can't pull your air. Mm-hmm. So one of the, we were talking in, I think it was your other video about the, the neuroplasticity yep, yep. Of, the, of that. Yeah. So when I'll take people through my train your ass off thing, it's just a long, long day. They'll, we'll start with the squat technique about 1230 okay. and, and probably get done maybe at two. And then right. they have their mental checklist. Yep. It's all established. Then we go through all their other stuff. One of the things I love to do is like the leg training that you did with mm -hmm. Fuji where you just absolutely blast it is yep. when they're so blasted they can't even walk I'll put them on here okay put the belt squat on and now <laughs> it's like okay stop refocus yeah. are your feet doing what they're supposed yep. to do are your feet rooted is your hips where they need to be breathe 
look, get your head straight mm -hmm. now. So I'm reinforcing all those cues and mm -hmm. in their brain, all they're trying to do is breathe. <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, that's the biggest advantage the pit shark has yeah. because all the other ones don't give you that in that fatigue state. They don't allow you to focus mm -hmm. where this, the worst thing that can happen is you just start rounding over so much yeah. that you end up banging your head okay, on things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You don't want head trauma from no, your yeah. leg workout? Yeah, Alright, then we got the dumbbell section over here. Mm -hmm. Where do the dumbbells go up to? Um, 150. 150? Alright. Alright, nice. Wait, wait. Let's, let's, go, let's go look at them. Well, what is this? I'm sorry, I'm taking over your video. Oh, this? Yeah. This is, um, um, I think it's West Side. It's an inverse leg curl. It's definitely West Side, but I don't know if West Side sells it or if it's Rogue. Mm -hmm. But it's inverse leg curl, so a lot of people think it's like a good, uh, like it's a glute ham raise. It's not because the knee stays in position, right? Okay. So when I think of the posterior chain, I think of the hamstring working from origin and insertion as it would if you run, jump, um, squat, mm -hmm. deadlift, throw. So hip hinge. <laughs> And when I, so when I look at the exercises for strongman powerlifting for correspondence, I want movements that are like that. Like glute ham raise allows that knee to drop and that hip to bend, right? <laughs> the um, RDLs, stiff leg deadlifts, pull throughs, you know, all those things allow that same thing. Uh, seated leg curl, no, just knee, right? Just knee, yep. Okay, lying leg curl, knee. Here, knees planted, you know, so. Yeah. That, not that they're bad, right? But they would be great for what we were talking, what, what I was talking to Juji about. He needs to quit doing those other things and spend more, more time, time doing yeah, yeah. those things that work those muscles and that more isolated function. I was thinking that this, if somebody couldn't do a glute ham raise, could help them get strong enough to do a glute ham raise, and I've not seen it yet. Okay. This definitely makes the hamstring stronger. Yeah. There's, there's, it's got its place. It's got a huge place in there. But it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, and I think it's because of that reason. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's put this on the inside. Welcome to the strength zone. Yeah, so. right. This is where I'd probably be hanging out most of the time over here. Oh, okay. So we got our chains. We got our bands. I think there are bands on your biggest selling yeah. products. Yes. Yeah. You can go Which is crazy. I mean, yeah, he's the band man. Yeah. He's the band man for a long time. I'm so bad a long time. Uh, and then we got deadlift platforms. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, potentially seven, if you want to count the mono arms okay. in there. But that? six that I would consider, like when we're talking about doing events, yeah. six is how I would count it for the event. Okay. And then what do you think on this side for the strength side is used the most? Oh, sure. uh, on this side? Yeah. Is that either the red or the orange like one? Okay. 100%. 100%. Yeah. That's for most of the time. The orange one or the red one? And why is that? Just because the... Um, well, I favorite? don't have... Right now, I don't have more than really two groups going at one okay. period okay. of time. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's part of it. And then if there are two groups going at one time, I want them close. Really? So you don't have one here and one down here. It's yeah. easier to spot. Um, but every Saturday is kind of the squat variation. Yeah. And so that's kind of how it ends up. And what's your thoughts uh, on turf? Do you, do you like no. turf? Do you not like turf? Like, I know some people are mixed feelings that I'm using it or not, but for you, like you have a lot of guys using it for push and pull and sleds nowadays or not really? I like that it's here. Okay. I, I don't know how much that you would need. I think this is just fine. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because this works for the sled, it works for the prowler. Okay. Um, it might be... If, if I had small men in here more than just Sam doing stuff now and again, it might need to be a little bit wider for the yoke. For yoke, yeah. But that kind of scares me too because like if the, the yoke video, starts getting dumped, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If, if people start dumping the yoke, then I don't know how well yeah. that's going to be on here. But yeah, it's, I, this is a good this is a good amount because it's also easier to lay on, you know, to stretch and crap yeah. like that. What about this thing up here? Yeah, what, what, the red thing? Yeah, that's a gym. I mean, I, I recall this one. Yeah, I remember using this thing, but I've never seen a gym that had one of these. Yeah, it's a gin rope. A gin rope. Gin. We, like gin and tonics? Gin? I mean, that's what you do at Elite FTS, right? That's what they gave me before I got here. <laughs> <laughs> they they give you the right really stuff. Good. Pre workout. There we go. This stashed in the corner. 
We used it for uh, tricep extensions, I believe, last mm -hmm. time we were here. You killed it. Yeah, that's been my <laughs> Amazon cart since the last time I was here. You know, and like the thing that I just keep pushing to mm -hmm. save for later. Because <laughs> I just can't, I can't bring myself to imagine me going through the trouble of hanging it in my gym right now. So it's like, uh. That's where I get concerned. It's like, yeah, hanging yeah. stuff. And then, took you, it apart. how do you but get the, it? Actually, you just put, um, the rod. What's the rod that we used for the power pull fake yeah, makeup loading thing? Pin. Loading pin. Loading yeah. Pin. So you just have a loading pin then on just there. Just sit there. And it's, you know, tricep. Okay. Yeah, you can do anything. Abs. You know, anything. Yeah, it's different stuff. Yep. How many barbells do you got in here? Don't know. <laughs> it's, it's probably over 200. <laughs> oh my word. Where's all the romance stuff, Dave? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> right there's some uh there's some uh right here. balls. <laughs> right. Okay. So there, there, there's some bags and balls. Oh, I think yeah, we got where's where, do we have logs? Do we have stones? There's a rickshaw. There is a um there's there, a log down there. Okay, we got a log. Are there's, there farmers? Yes, there's farmers, farmers down there. The yellows down there. Why are they so hidden? Because <laughs> nobody uses them and they're freaking heavy. Joey. <laughs> I'm feeling, uh, Sam. Yeah. I started looking around. I was like, okay, all They're right, hard like to this, put away. Like Somebody leaves them out. They're hard to put away. Then there's a yoke outside. So I think the one so thing the yoke is have. outside. Yeah, the yoke is outside. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody puts baby in the corner. How many competition benches do you have? Um, one, two, three, one's missing four, five, five. One, okay. two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think, five, five. yeah, for my gym, I definitely want to get a competition bench. And then Ooh. I don't know why, but I really like this this bench rack for some reason. I, I love it. I I do, love the shit out yeah, of like I, I use it all the it's time. It's cool because these, these pads come off too, right? Yes. So you can, you can put them on and off if you want it to. Yeah, right. And then you can basically do like a floor press or any mm -hmm. other crazy stuff. But we used this last time when we were doing Juji's tricep uh, video, getting a pump. Um, we used the, the yoke bar as well without the handles on it. Mm -hmm. You became a, a table uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, I remember you yeah, had a tablecloth on me, <laughs> something like that. But this thing is awesome. And you, you really don't see much stuff like this, which is what's cool. What do you think is the most used bar in here? Or you guys find yourself using the most? For squats, it's probably either a, because uh, there's, there's power lifters, yep. it's either a, a, a heavy squat bar. Okay. Or I, I would say that's kind of debatable, though, because most of us out right now are washed up meatheads so I, I would say probably the yoke bar i mean it's close for the squats between the yoke bar and the squat bar. all right so if, if you could take the squat bar out you can't have a squat bar what would be your next best bar to use for squatting that you would purchase I me mean, a yoke bar yoke bar yeah 100 percent okay. because there's there's a lot of different variations but the padding that we have on our yoke bar allows for the distribution to go further across the upper mm -hmm. back where if you look at our spider bar that pads only that long yeah. and it's not that big of a pad so there's the, there's more direct spinal compression because it's not spread out mm -hmm. over the whole track what i'm trying to say is when i would i got to a point where i can't grab the squat bar and all i could use was a yoke bar yeah i was using the older yoke bars and after two three weeks i couldn't recover mm -hmm. i just felt like i was getting hit by a truck like that mm -hmm. upper back beating type yeah, of yeah, thing. yeah when i started to think that if we can distribute this force a little lighter then I was able to use it more frequently, mm -hmm. which that's why I say that, because I believe with the other ones, if you're pushing it hard or you're even mm -hmm. halfway heavy, that's going to just be too much spinal yeah. compression. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and what's a, a total uh, square footage of this, the gym in here? Uh, just under 8,000. So I would say that it was 8,000 before the bathroom. Whoa. So 7,600 maybe, something like that. If only we could get rid of this bathroom, huh? Yeah, what would no. you put there? If you could put anything where the bathrooms were, what do you think you'd put there? Um, That's a lot of space, actually. I think, the way that, I think the way that we had it mocked up is we originally, and it would have changed, is we were going to have all the racks and model, like th this going on on this side, and then on that side, the same type of thing going on, but with all the benches. Okay. Instead of being how it, I like yeah, how yeah. it is now better. Yeah because it's all kind of there okay. with it. Meat heads on one side. Well, certain kinds of meat heads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the cutouts <laughs> just always kind of make it weird because you you not only lose that floor space, but you, you gain these weird areas, like right in front of the bathroom. You know, there's nothing you can really yeah. put there. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. I'd love to come here during like, him a there. huge uh, 
uh, <laughs> seminar or something where you just see the diversity of who's on this side and who's oh, on the it's, other it's, side. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> like, without, like, just being a fly on the wall. Like, you just, don't have to be just that. Just seeing where people just start moving and migrating. No, if it's just, like, somebody has got, you know, somebody's coming into town and it's a friend of a friend, they're like, hey, can I come train? I can tell you within 10 where minutes going. of when they come in here where, by where they drop their bag, how they train. That's hilarious. What if they drop their bag thing. near the podcast table, which is right in the middle? Well, that's that's the next thing. Yeah, I wanted to talk about is is the uh, the table talk. So we'll get there in a second. But I just find it hilarious that the psychology of the athlete. He already knew where I put my bag. <laughs> mm-hmm. Without even without even I knowing, think it's he a knew. comfort level, right? <laughs> yeah. there, there's also I think that it's also the sit down thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, so yeah. The, what's the first thing a, a strength athlete wants to do when they come to the gym? So they want to sit on sit, their sit ass, down. right? Yeah, so yeah. you're going to bring your bag and you're going to drop it closest to, to the bench. nearest yeah, area yeah. Yep. to sit. Yeah, yeah. So That cracks me up. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go over. The last thing I want to talk about in the gym is the table talk because that is epic and historical. We find Jacob. Hello. Hello. I mean, guys, this is a legit setup when it comes to pop. I mean, look at this. He's got, like, so many cords. Oh, I, I don't even know. Yeah, it's like Medusa's hair of cords over here <laughs> and then we got all the microphones and the setup so r- real quick tell us just about the history of the podcast like when did you start the podcast i remember it was one of the first strength podcasts that i was really kind of getting into and listening to you've mm-hmm. had a ton of people on there throughout the years uh, just a crazy amount of episodes so w- was that something you always wanted to do you kind of fell into you enjoy it like i want the history of it because my yeah. full history i go back to <laughs> before social media i I would voice record people like Buddy Morris. Okay. So I would just call him and talk to him and then have to record it on this little device. Yeah. And then I would load it on our website. And those are probably all gone at this point. But what I didn't understand when I was doing that is how much money it was going to cost. <laughs> this is before yeah, YouTube. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so the, the bandwidth was going through the oh, roof. Oh, the internet. Like yes, just <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because you get even if there's 30 people listening to a one-hour interview, that's that's fooling your sight for the yeah, whole time. Yeah, yeah. And my web guy's like, dude, whatever you're doing, you know, just stop it right now or you're going to have to pay. And I'm like, oh, shit. That was the original interview okay. format. Then after that. What year do you think that was? Oh, man, 2000. Wow. I mean, we're going way, That's way, 20, way, yeah, way so back. 21 years. Yeah, because I was calling them to interview them to write articles. So okay. I, would inter- I would interview them, write the notes, have this trick and scratch, then have Jim try to put it together in some type of legible format. Or he would do the same. And I'm like, this sucks. Maybe we could just record it mm-hmm. and then not have to do all this writing bull crap yeah. and just put it out. Mm-hmm. So it was, it, was, it was an answer of... It was like, how can we make this easier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which it definitely did. And after that, it went, years go by. And when Mark Watts started working for us, he wanted to do a sports performance podcast. Okay. And I, at the time, I'm like, man, it's, I don't know shit about this. Just do whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. So he did it, and it was set up on a phone where he would call these coaches. And with that, there's – I looked the other day. There's, there's like – 600,000 total downloads on. I mean, there, there was more than I thought. Um, and uh, I think a few hundred episodes. Okay. And it's weird when I went through and started looking at a lot of these people because now one of them was like, uh, I think his name was James Cleary. Okay. He, he's written this book, uh, Atomic, Atomic Habits. Habits. This is, he did this thing with Mark like a year when he was doing the research really? before. Yeah, that's how far. <laughs> so I'm seeing people like that as I'm going through that's there, right? crazy. And I'm like, well, did he talk to Jordan Peterson? I'm say, like looking through. We had through. like Gary Vee on there. You yeah, no exactly. Idea. I'm like, I don't know who the hell he was talking to, but he was talking to everybody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> those never did a whole lot for us, never really did yeah. any traction. So we just quit doing that because it became more of a pain in the butt than anything else and then right no it might have been before i don't know where it falls in but i used when i was dieting yeah i would get all these q and a's mm-hmm. through the website and i couldn't answer the q and a's because as we talked about on the podcast you're dieting you only have like 10 minutes a day you can think yeah so while i was on <laughs> a treadmill i would answer my q and a's uh-huh. and then i post it on youtube these are still on either our youtube or the archive site and it was just called from the mill mm-hmm. So I just answer the questions, walking on a treadmill. Then, then I quit dieting, and people wanted, they're asking me to keep doing that. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do the cardio. 
I didn't like <laughs> cardio. <laughs> so I sat down at the table and I just ah, did a so table, talk. table talk. So yeah, so I just okay. took the questions from my Q&A, answered three or four of them, threw them up on YouTube. And it's funny, we didn't, when we were talking about YouTube yesterday, <laughs> I just threw it up on YouTube only so they could host it. I would take the embedded code and put it in my training log. Yeah. That's how it started. So from there, that's really what it was to where one of my media guys shortly thereafter said we should try to do this as a podcast. I'm like, well, how's it any different than what I'm doing now? Mm-hmm. And I said, well, it's really not. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we just do the same thing so, yeah. and then go from there. So that's where, how it No, started. that's cool. You were kind of just like an early pioneer, not really know, like, I guess knowing where it was going to head or what it was going to be like, but you know, just Q and A's, the table talks, the treadmill walking. It's, it's pretty awesome. But you know, I'm just grateful to be here, guys. I want to give you guys a quick tour of the whole thing. That I like the history behind it. And throughout this video, you're going to be watching B-roll of guys training in here and getting after it and uh, seeing all the machines and all the equipment. So um, I'm just, like I said, grateful. I never really thought I'd ever be in here doing episodes on Table Talk, learning from him, hanging out with him. So it's been an amazing experience. And uh, he's. Like his Instagram says, been under the bar for quite a long time. So for me, it's, there's just, I'm just learning. I'm constantly learning and growing. And, and I don't know, there's just like a presence in here, right? You got like a million pictures on the wall of everyone and all the training. You know, it's just, just amazing. Uh, so this place is like Mecca to me. Um, but dude, just want to say thank you so much for having no, me for and sure. uh, checking it out. And then uh, obviously plug yourself. This whole thing was basically a product. I wouldn't do this video if I didn't believe in his products. and like what he's putting out here and getting in my gym, obviously. Um, but uh, where can they find you? Uh, leadfts.com. I mean, every everything you can put in a gym bag or load plates on. Yeah, yeah. Sell. But the, the, difference, the difference between us and a lot of other people that are in the space, mm-hmm. the competitive space, is a lot of people will say what they do is content marketing. So they're doing the content to market their item. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what we do is kind of the opposite, right? So <clears throat> we are selling the products to produce the content mm-hmm. because it's our product sales that allows us to produce the content, the articles, the mm-hmm. YouTubes, everything else that you see there. It's not the other way around. Yeah, yeah. So when we <laughs> go about it the way that we've gone about it, and this is how I started the company in 98, it removes bias. You know, so if it's educational information that they're looking at, you know, to be able to get better from us, we, we, we're not, we don't sell that. Mm-hmm. What we sell are products that can help you get better, but we're not selling you this program to make you get better, mm-hmm. which removes all bias yeah, yeah. from any educational content that we put out so people know we're just in this to be able to help them get yeah, better. Yeah, sure. And the way that we do that is people like yourself, people like Juji, and people, anybody who's watching this, buying our products and goods that so when this live learn pass on sometimes they think you know it's just me doing this live learning and pass on but that's not how it works Mm -hmm. you know it's the people that are supporting the company that are creating that ability for us to be able to pass on and help other people so that's what all this is Mm -hmm. you know that's how it went from being a reverse hyper and a glued ham raise in a garage Mm -hmm. you know to what it is now and all the other stuff and and kind of piggyback off of that like my preconceived notion coming here is that there were like 50 to 100 people that worked here and how many employees do you have uh it's seasonal so right now we might have 18 okay <laughs> so but eight, 18 <laughs> eight, okay it's high for 18 but like <laughs> what i'm trying to say guys is it still like has that personal touch to everything that they do right like just like he had said i couldn't agree more and those are the companies that i want to support stand behind work with i only work with like 10 people you know and, and those are the people that are in my circle and i care about i trust and I'm trying to promote and, you know. Yeah, I'm one of them, right? And he's, he's right here, too. Wouldn't be where I'm at without, uh, without Mr. John Call in the house. You, you sweat, man. You're perspirating. What are you training? My butt. Your butt? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not strong enough. i got to beat you. And uh, go head over to Juji's and buy some smelling salts. Okay, guys? Tell them I sent you. Uh, but, yeah, that's it. So I'm just grateful. we got tons of videos that are, are coming out. He's going to help me with my squat technique. Juju and I are gonna go head to head in a squat battle. I got stuff going on with Sam, working on some issues and some other things. Uh, so guys, this is gonna be an awesome collab. Stay tuned for all the videos coming out and uh, stay lean, mean strike machine. Peace. Appreciate it.